Madam President, a resolution of tribute for the Honorable Glenn S. Anderson, whereas the members of this legislative body are proud to commend and thank our colleague Glenn Anderson for his eight years of service. His tenure as a public servant began with nine years on the Westland City Council, continued with three terms in the Michigan House of Representatives, and his years in the Senate. And, and as his years in the Senate draw to a close, his efforts and high standards are to be lauded. And whereas Senator Anderson has served with dist distinction on the Appropriations Committee during each of his Senate terms, too, as Minority Vice Chair. He also sat as Vice Chair on several Appropriations Subcommittees, including Community Colleges, Department of Corrections, Transportation, and General Government. His vision, experience, and leadership have been valuable assets as he worked to make government fiscally responsible and ensure the continuation of vital services while maintaining a balanced budget. And whereas Senator Anderson is committed to building strong communities, which are essential to a stronger Michigan, over the years he has been active in community service organizations, including the JCs, Goodfellows, Rotary Club, Civitans, Kiwanis, Rouge River Rescue, Churchill Hive PTA, and the Western Wayne NAACP. In recognition of his dedication to the work of the people, his his honors have included Legislator of the Year awards from the Michigan Association of Chiefs of Police, the Police Officers Association of Michigan, and the Hemophilia Foundation of Michigan. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate that we honor Glenn S. Anderson as he concludes his service to the Michigan Sur Senate, and be it further resolved that copies of this resolution be transmitted to Senator Anderson as evidence of our gratitude and best wishes. Senator Anderson. Thank you, Madam President. I, uh, I guess I should throw away those bad comments in my, <laughs> but anyway, I, uh, I appreciate very much the uh, resolution, and I would ask that my comments be included and recorded in the journal. After 14 years in the Michigan legislature, it's come time to say farewell to this phase of my life and move on to life outside the legislature and hopefully continue in some capacity uh, to serve the citizens of Michigan. At the outset, I'd like to thank my family for tolerating my countless hours away from home and most of, my, most of all, my amazing and dedicated partner over the last 37 years, my wife, Gail. It's truly been an honor to have been given this opportunity to serve the people of the 6th Senate District. I've always maintained that I'm an ordinary guy who's been given an extraordinary opportunity. As I told someone soon after being elected to the, to the State Senate in 2007, or in 2006, uh, who asked what it feels like to be a senator, I replied, well, I got up this morning and still put my pants on one leg at a time, uh, the same as before. I've always tried to stay well grounded and not exaggerate my importance in life. If I ever get the slightest bit full of myself, I get a reset when I return home. I thank my wife for that. Even being in the minority and facing many challenges and getting good legislation passed in such a partisan atmosphere, I can't believe anything that would have presented such personal rewards as regularly having folks back home come up to me and express their appreciation for what I and my staff have done for them. I agree with the, the good senator from the 16th district who just the other day said that he believed it would be good for all legislators to serve in the minority at least once to understand what it's like. <laughs> uh, not because I'm unhappy as to how we've seen some members' opinions and efforts disregarded by the majority, but because we should all be better than that and realize our whole state would be better represented and this great institution would have greater standing in public opinion as well. Being an eternal optimist, my hope is 
that things begin to change under new leadership next year. At a time like this, I cannot help but think back to when I would walk up to the Capitol after recently being elected to my first term in the Michigan House from the House office building. I remember looking at the Capitol aglow in the night, thinking how fortunate I was to be coming to work each day in this magnificent building on behalf of those back home. I continue to believe that we are all fortunate to have been a part of this great institution. I have tried, I've always tried to be consistent in my belief and that my duty here was to be on the job, to be first of all, and to be present to cast votes. Cast votes without fear of where, whether someone would agree or disagree but based on the information I had available to me at the time and always represent what I believed to be best in the long run for our citizens. While I have a number of votes, I have on a number of votes and issues made my opinion known. I have tried hard to be respectful of others' opinions and not be personal. I have always tried to keep my word to others and uphold the highest ethical standards. Over 14 years, as you probably have also experienced, I've observed others who did not. One great disappointment to me was a current senator who I and my staff invited to be part of a work group, which she sent her staffer to be part of for each meeting. After we put our proposed bills on the table for everyone to see and met numerous times, she then broke faith and undercut all the work of my staff and that I had my, I and my staff had done regarding trafficking. It's unfortunate some choose to deal in a less than honest way. If not only, it not only disrespects members, but it dishonors the institution of the Senate as well. I've tried to always be respectful of everyone who serves the people in the state of Michigan, including those who work at all levels, including those just passing through while they worked towards their degree. A large number of those have been students that have interned for me in the House and Senate, performing valuable services and thoroughly enjoying what it feels like to help someone. The pride I've gained from seeing them continuing on their career path has been immeasurable. A few thank yous. I've had the good fortune to meet and work with many, many people over the last 14 years who were indeed ethical and respectful to those around them. I'll never forget their honesty, dedication, and the way they conducted themselves. Many of these members were chairs of committees I've served on. They were genuinely interested in listening to ideas from this side of the aisle, and many times took my suggestions under consideration and supported them. Two such chairs are people that I consider to be my friends. Tony Stamas supported a number of ideas I had while working on the Higher Ed Appropriations Subcommittee. I've enjoyed working with our Appropriations Chair, as difficult as it's been at times when the philosophical gap was wide between our members. More recently, the Senator from the 30, 35th District has been an outstanding Chairman of the Community College Subcommittee of Appropriations, who has been incredibly open to ideas I brought to the table He's, conduct, he's conducted himself with class, honesty, and respect. There are others who have made, there are others that have made an impression on me, including the current majority floor leader, who despite the wide gap in our political views, has been extremely honest in his discussions and dealings with me. He's been open to discussion on virtually every issue I've approached him on and never blindsided me. I respect that, and I respect him as leader. I also appreciate my Democratic colleagues for fighting the good fight and standing up for values that I believe are right and making sure others outside this Capitol have a voice. I especially appreciate my good friend, the Senator from the 3rd District, whose impassioned comments have silenced the floor many times. He has attempted to call us to a higher level. I'd like to give a big thank you to those who have served on my staff over the last 14 years, as well as central staff, and most, most recently in the Senate, 
those 14 years, but most recently in the Senate. Many have moved on to other opportunities, but, have been, but I've been fortunate to have had a steady, stable, and capable staff over the last eight years in the Senate. I'd like to extend my deepest appreciation to my former legislative aide, Scott Hendrickson, who was here with us last week uh, and has already moved on, uh, and my current staff, Zach Krim, Michelle Zylstra, and my chief of staff, Josh Brandt. They helped me make my office one of the most rep responsive offices in the Senate and were so professional. I couldn't imagine having done this job without them. I'm getting close to the end, folks. <laughs> in, honor of one of, in honor of my colleagues on this side of the aisle, I'd like to leave everyone with a couple of quotes. One is very short by John Southard. The only, and I put this on my, e my personal emails that go out, a little caption on the bottom, a little saying, the only people with whom you should try to get even are those that have helped you. I think it's a good thing for us to, to work, conduct ourselves by. And one that's a bit humorous, but it's something that I heard all my life growing up from my father. He traded livestock, bought and sold livestock in Tennessee, and was very candid about sizing people up. His quote was one, as I said, that I've heard all my life, which aptly applies to some who have a tendency to think too highly of themselves. Some we've all known from working in the legislature, and certainly over the last 14 years, I've seen a few. He, his famous saying, and one that will always stick with me, is, I wish I could buy him for what he's worth and sell him for what he thinks he's worth. I wish I will leave you with the following message that someone from the district who recently lost his young son shared with me in a card that he thanked me for visiting the funeral home. I thought it very appropriate and something we could all use. It's written by Bonnie Moore and it's titled Living Life. Life is not a race, but indeed a journey. Be honest, work hard, be choosy, Say thank you, I love you, and great job to someone each day. Go to church. I need to do more of that. Take time for prayer. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. Let your handshake mean more than pen and paper. Love your life and, and what you've been given. It's not accidental. Search for your purpose and do it as best you can. Dreaming does matter. It allows you to become what you aspire to be. Laugh often. Appreciate the little things in life and enjoy them. Some of the best things in life really are free. Do not worry. Less wrinkles are more becoming. Recognize the pe special people, or forget, or pardon me, forgive. It frees the mind. Take time for yourself. Plan for longevity. Recognize the special people you've been blessed to know. Live for today. Enjoy the moment. Thank you to all that I've had the pleasure of working with, and especially the people of the 6th District. I urge everyone to always reach for higher ground. Merry Christmas, goodbye, and good luck.